Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this will be the book that I'll be starting on, Snakes, Roosters and Pigs. This is by my guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche. And I'll be reading from the back, where is the introduction into our guru. And there's also the, ad, no, sorry. There is an introduction in within the book, um, a short biography of my guru, and then I'll be sharing on the ed editor's introduction before I actually go into the book proper. So thank you for sharing your time with me, and I do hope that you'll enjoy this. And before that, I will, as usual, go to the picture, and this will be a cover of the book to share with you. Right, um, His Eminence Sam Toko Rinpoche, A Short Biography. Beloved for his unconventional contemporary approach to Dharma, His Eminence Sam Toko Rinpoche brings more than 2,500 years of Buddhist wisdom and teachings to the modern spiritual seekers by connecting ancient worlds with new people, cultures, attitudes, and lifestyles a Mongolian-Tibetan heritage, a childhood in Taiwan and in, in the United States of America, intensive monastic studies in India, and now the spiritual guide of Kachara organization in Malaysia. These are but some of the many facets that contribute to Rinpoche, Sam Rinpoche's unique ability to effortlessly bridge the East and the West. His teachings bring the Dharma to our everyday lives, and in doing so, he is able to bring the ancient time-honored Buddhist philosophies and practices into the 21st century. Sam Rinpoche has been strongly inclined towards Dharma since his early childhood and has studied under many great Buddhist masters of the Tibetan tra tradition. Sam Rinpoche eventually went on to receive his monastic education at Ganden Shatse Monastery currently located in Mangod in South India. Following the advice of his beloved guru, His Holiness Kapje Zong Rinpoche, Sam Rinpoche took vows as a monk from His Holiness the Dalai Lama and joined Ganden Shatse Monastery when he was in his early 20s. His two preceding incarnations, Gendun Nedrak and Kentro Rinpoche Tukten Langsam, Lamsang, had also studied at the original Ganden Shatse Monastery when it was then located in Tibet. There, they obtained Geshe Laram degrees before completing their studies at Gyoto Tantric College. Gedun Nedrak went on to become the lead chanter and later abbot of Ganden Monastery, while Kentro Rinpoche brought the Dharma to the lay people of the Pari district of Tibet. The tremendous and virtuous work of his previous lifetimes can perhaps be reflected again in Sam Rinpoche's present-day activities in Malaysia, where he continues his selfless practice of teaching vast numbers of non-monastic communities in places where the Dharma has just begun to bloom. During his nine years in Ganden, Sam Rinpoche was involved in extensive charitable works including building schools for refugee children in India, building dormitories and upgrading living conditions for the monastic community, and providing long-term assistance to the poor lay community of Manga. Now, based in Malaysia and Nepal, Sam Rinpoche continues his, this immense work to benefit many. Through creative and engaging approaches, Sam Rinpoche continually continuously shares new methods of bringing happiness and relief to people from all walks of life, regardless of their religious faith. Sam Rinpoche also maintains close contact with Ganden Monastery. Through his constant practice of generosity and with a deeply altruistic motivation, he continues to frequently sponsor Ganden's work and activities. 
be inspired by His Eminence Sam, Rinpo, Sam Toko Rinpoche's work and life at www.samtoku.com and share in his personal views, thoughts and news on his blog at blog.samtoku.com Now the editor's introduction. Why snakes, roosters and pigs, you ask? The Buddhist perspective of life or samsara with its sixth realm of existence into which one is continually reborn if they do not attain nirvana, liberation, can be best symbolized by the famous Buddhist drawing of the wheel of life. This is a structure of a huge wheel and spokes with three concentric, concentric circles of varying sizes held in the wide open, menacing jaws of Yama, the fierce and wrathful lord of death. Lord of Death. The innermost circle or hub of this wheel of life, the karmic center, holds our three lovely creatures, the snake, the rooster, and the pig, all curled up, intertwined together, and coming out of each other's mouth, circling round and round and round, endlessly. These animals represent the three poisons of our karmic existence, in samsara. The snake symbolizes hatred and or anger. The rooster represents pride or desire. The pig personifies ignorance. All these three root delusions reside in the center or hub of the wheel. The emotions or delusions that they represent are all interconnected and as a result, will keep coming back to the basic root delusion, ignorance, which is the source of our samsaric existence, giving rise again and again to our wrong perceptions, emotional upheavals, and corresponding wrongful actions. Let me share with you the picture of this. Sorry, not this. This, yes. This is the wheel of life as uh, mentioned. As you can see, the circles, there are three circles and these are held within the mouth of Yama, the Lord of Death. And the picture is a bit small, but in the center, the very center of it, you can see that um, it is actually the these three creatures there, the snake, rooster and pig. And then, um, as you can see on the outer part, that there's the six realms that's represented by, you know, there's, uh, there's the outer tree. Or oh, anyway, I'll continue with that because it's all in the description here. Okay, just outside of this inner karmic center is the intermediate. Sorry, I think I would... Um, Go back a little bit. Right. The emotions or delusions that they represent are all interconnected and as a result all keep coming back to the basic root delusion, ignorance, which is the source of our samsaric existence, giving rise again and again to our wrong perceptions, emotional upheavals and corresponding wrongful actions. Just outside of this inner karmic center is the intermediate circle representing the karma states of existence with the left ascending to the higher realms through meritorious actions and the right descending to lower realms through wrongful or evil deeds. There are six segments representing the six realms where all sentient beings take rebirth. The three higher realms, humans, demigods and gods, the three lower realms, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. Beyond this is the outermost ring, which describes the 12 stages of dependent origination. In the following teachings on karma and rebirth, Rinpoche skillfully shows us how, although we may think we are superior to animals, 
we actually have the same attributes as animals, and how when we fail to change and transform ourselves, or when we indulge in our selfish pleasure-seeking pursuits, we are actually no different from animals displaying their animal traits. In this teaching, Rinpoche therefore teaches us about rebirth and karma through the analogy of simple farm animals within the unshakable Buddhist traditions and lineage teachings. Figuratively, and in the literal sense, snakes, roosters, and pigs shows us how our samsaric actions impede us from the goal of nirvana and keep us on the continuous cycle of death and rebirth. A word about the editing and layout of this book. The wonderfully inspired teachings given by Rinpoche here on karma, rebirth, and samsara are all interconnected, and the editors felt that to separate these short teachings into formal chapters would detract from the flow. There are therefore no chapter delineations here, but rather subheadings. This teaching arose during a book club between Rinpoche and some of the students and Dharma workers of the Kachara organization. The main text studied in this session of the book club was the Mahasiddha and his idiot servant by John Riley Perks, a biography of the famous Buddhist teacher Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche. As Rinpoche makes many references to this book throughout the teaching, it may be helpful for you to also study this book alongside snakes, roosters, and pigs. Apart from the central teaching on karma and the three root delusions, Rinpoche also gave te special teachings on other subjects through the course of this evening. This book is accompanied by a DVD of the original teaching given by Rinpoche, which includes these additional teachings. The reader may find some repetition in some of the teachings. They have been left in to emphasize the importance of certain statements which our Lama has made. As Rinpoche said himself, words have no meaning for me. He skillfully uses whatever words are necessary to put his message across to us at all levels of understanding, and it is the message which he conveys that is so powerful. And so, we have left in some colloquialisms and even some dramatic illustrations, which, as Rinpoche himself said, don't get stuck on words. At the back of the book is a reading group guide. As this eternal and fundamental subject of karma inevitably brings forth many questions, we hope that you will find this useful in your book clubs private reading group discussion, or even for your personal contemplation and meditation. We sincerely hope that you will enjoy and be humbled and inspired by Rinpoche's teachings as much as we had in compiling, editing, and still learning from them. This was in, uh, by the editors in Kuala Lumpur, May 2010. With that, I will end this session and continue truly into the book in my next session. This is the book to get where it will root out the f basic of our delusions and why we remain in samsara. Thank you for sharing your time with me and I will complete this with a completion dedication and this time I will do it in English. May the precious, precious body mind where it is not born arise and grow. May that bond have no decline but increase forevermore. May the precious emptiness where it is not born arise and grow. May that bond have no decline but increase forevermore. May this merit accumulated by myself and others beneficially serve all sentient beings and the Buddha Dharma, and especially may the essential teachings of the unerring Master Tsongkhapa become clear and enduring. In all my rebirths, 
May I not be parted from perfect gurus. Let me enjoy the abundance of the Dharma, perfecting the quality stages and paths. May I quickly attain the rank of Vajradhara Buddha. By this virtue, may I quickly realize Guru Buddhahood and transfer each sentient being into the enlightened state. May all conditive conditions arise and all obstacles be pacified in order to increase infinitely the doctrine of the spiritual king Tsongkhapa. By the merits of the three times of myself and others, may the doctrine of the Lama Tsongkhapa blaze forever. At dawn or dusk, at night or midday, may the three jewels grant us their blessing. May they help us to achieve all realizations and sprinkle the paths of our lives with fairest signs of auspiciousness. May the holy teachers have long lives. May the enlightened activities be fully displayed in the ten directions. And may the brightness of the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa continuously dissipate the veil of darkness covering the land of the three realms. In this holy land surrounded by snow mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. May your lotus feet, O powerful Charanzi Tenzin Gyatso, remain in this world until the end of samsara. So this is the book. Please do get it if you can, because it is very informative. And as mentioned, there is a CD at the back with additional teachings, which we can benefit from. Thank you for sharing your time with me. And please join me for me uh, when I actually go into the book proper. Thank you.